Hey, this is John Young. Today we're looking at batteries, a variety of different batteries. And this is going to be part of a multi-part series, looking at batteries and inverters. We're going to be looking at how batteries like this can run inverters, little power inverters like this, to run our 110 volt outlet devices. This is a Ryobi version, which is a 300 watt peak unit. And then we'll be looking at some things that are even bigger, like this Jackery, which is a 1000 watt continuous unit. And we're going to be figuring out how those affect the runtime of this running a variety of different, different devices. Now, first off, you hear these different devices talk about 300 watts of continuous power or 1,000 watts of continuous power. Well, the watts have to come from somewhere, and that comes from a variety of different batteries. Now, typically, this battery, this is the Ryobi, it can run that 300-watt inverter. Some have built-in batteries, and then I've got a couple of other batteries here. Now, the way we figure out available wattage is really kind of su kind of simple. Uh, right here, we've got a Greenworks Pro battery. It is a 60 volt, and it is a 2 amp hour battery. So literally, what you're doing is you're taking your voltage, 60 volt, times your, your amp hour, which is 2. So this has roughly 120 watts of power available to be used for whatever the device it would be running. So if it's a lawnmower, it's going to have that amount. If the lawnmower, say, has a draw of 100 watts, this has 120 watts, you're going to be getting a runtime of, of around that, that hour. If your lawnmower draws 200 watts of power, this isn't going to last that long at having only approximately 100. Because there's an efficiency factor in, in some of the batteries that are used. This is a lithium-based battery in here, which means you're going to get almost 100% of the wattage out of it, but not completely. There's going to be some fudge factor. Some batteries, such as this particular one that many ice fishermen use, uh, it's used in battery backups. It's a 12 volt, but it's in this one is a seven and a half, seven amp hour battery. You're, they're very common. This particular battery, again, we take our seven times our 12, and we're at 84. So we have 84 watts of power in this as a reserve. But this is an AGM. AGM and lead-based batteries generally get closer to 50% of available wattage compared to lithium-based, which are going to get a higher, a higher usage of the available wattage. So we have 84. Really, realistically, we're probably only going to get about 50 watts before this runs out. So if we have something that only draws 10 watts of power, that's going to give us roughly five hours of runtime off this. If it draws 50 watts, we're going to get an hour. If it draws 25 watts, we're going to get a half an hour. To give you an idea, so we jump back to this. It's a lithium-based battery, so it's going to be closer to 100%. So our 60 times our 2 is 120 watts of available power. So if this was on an inverter, now the inverter itself is going to have some efficiency issues. They're not 100%. So let's just take this 120. Because of maybe some battery inefficiency, let's take it down to 100 watts of available power coming out of this. Then we go to our inverter. Our inverter is going to also have some inefficiency. So the rule is kind of going down to 85% of that. So that means that our inverter is going to lose roughly 15%. So of the 100 watts available from this, we're going to be down to really 85 watts potential to use for our device, especially when it's, inver it's converting from the whatever battery to our outlet. So now we've gone from 100 watt down to roughly 85 watt coming out of here. So if I was running an 80 watt light bulb, I, it would run for about an hour, just to give you an idea. Now of the batteries here, you'll see that there's you know, different sizes and different things. This is a 12 volt battery. This is a lithium based battery. And this has a, let's see, a 27 amp hour. And this particular one actually kind of already tells us that it has, it has 345 watts available for us. So that means that this running a 12 volt device is going to be able to run that 12 volt device. You know, if it's a 10 watt thing, it's gonna be able to run it for a long, long time. If it's running through an inverter, so you have 340, let's, just run, let's round it for ease. Uh, let's round it to 350. It's, it's rounding up, but we're gonna just round it to 350. We've got 350. If we run it through an inverter of some sort, which this wouldn't work with this, but an inverter of some sort. 
we're going to lose 80, uh, 15%. So we're going to have 85%. So let's take that at 80. Let's see. So we got 15, 45. Uh, let's say it's about 50, 50 watts that's gone. So now this battery through an inverter would give us approximately 300 watts to use. So if whatever our draw is, is 100 watts, it would be able to power it for three hours. If our draw is 50 watts, it would be able to run it for six hours. Little Milwaukee, this is an M2 or M12, which is a 12 volt battery. This little battery is a six amp hour battery. So this battery times the 12 is giving us, is giving us 72 uh, watts of power to use. This is a lithium based, so we're going to get pretty close to that 72, so we're pretty happy with that. This is for cordless tools, and it also runs some USB things, but a little battery like this is just interesting that a little battery, it, granted it's on a 12 volt, and this is a 60 volt, but a little battery like this is not far off from you know, 12 volt, 12 volt, six amp hour, just, just wanted to throw that out there. If you're into DeWalt, the 20 volt batteries. This particular one's a five amp hour. So you've cheated the math, 20 times a five, it's a hundred. It's a lithium based battery. So it's gonna give us close to what, what our hundred watts of, of power is contained in this. On our inverter, it's going to be able to power for a little, a little while. Right over here, what's actually running our lights is a little inverter. This is a Ryobi inverter. It has a three amp hour battery on it. It's in an 18 volt system. So we do the math on that 18, 36, 54, is my right? Yes, 54. So that is 54 watts of power and it's running USB lights. So it's very minimal. So that's going to be able to power those, those devices for quite amount, a quite amount of time, which is why I have it over here. Then I don't have to run extension cords. So let's get back to that, that Ryobi inverter. It's a 300 watt inverter. What that basically is telling us is that, that it should be able to handle a load. Let's see, does it have a, at 300 watts. So that's going to be pretty much our max load on this thing. It might peak out for a split second above that, but not so much. Most of the time when this says 300 watts, that's kind of the peak. You're running watts on something like this for safety. Safety is going to be less than that. So if I take my 6 amp hour Ryobi, this is in their 40 volt times the 6 amp hour, that's 240 watts of potential power. The lithium base, so we're going to pretty much kind of plan on getting that 240 watts out of there. So we put that 240 watt battery in here. Now this has a peak of peak draw of 300 watts. Most of the time when you're using something like this, you don't want to really exceed roughly two thirds of it because we have some inefficiency. That that 85% of, of battery or the wattage fits into things like this. So my 240 watts here, once I put it in here, really I'm only getting 85% of it. So that means when we take and put these together, we're roughly getting about 200 usable watts here in the outlet from that, because again, we have that 15% inefficiency or we're getting 85% of the battery. So now we've got 200 watts of power. Now it just depends on how quickly we wanna use it. If we put something on here, like a little heater, which I have done, a little 200 watt heater, we put that on there and it's going to last just short of an hour, somewhere in that ballpark, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending. If we put a 100 watt load, like a 100 watt light bulb, we put that on here. Well, we have 200 watts of electricity coming through and available through the outlet. So if I put a 100 watt bulb on here, I'm going to get two hours out of it. If I put something above 300 watts on this, truthfully above 250 watts on this, somewhere in that ballpark, 200 watts, if it's gonna draw that much, it's going to trip this. It's gonna possibly ruin this because when you get to the max of these things, they get warm and then it, there's a little breaker, circuit breaker type things that will pop in them. Most of the time it'll pop and then once it cools or resets and it's good, sometimes not so much. So you don't wanna be pushing these things to their max. So people have asked, can I run a coffee maker with these? No, you cannot. You, you gotta check the wattage of what the device is that you're running. Any device that is rated, that's going to be pulling less than 200 watts, this could get you there for a period of time. If it's 50 watts, again, think about it. We have 200 watts available. So if it's only pulling 50 watts, that's pulling 50 watts per hour. This would then run it for four hours. If it's a 200 watt load right to there, again, one hour. 
So now we get to the Jackery, and the Jackery, uh, we'll be putting links, by the way, in the bottom here for you guys to check out a lot of things because there are different inverters for different, you know, Ryobi has inverters, everybody has inverters now. And then there's the big, just kind of standalone battery powered ones. Now the Jackery is a bigger unit. This particular one is a thousand watt run. And what that means is basically it can handle up to a thousand watt load continuous. So it's, if you're going to be running it at its max, you're going to be getting its least amount of length of life. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. This particular unit compared to some of the other units like we have with a little Ryobi here, this one has a surge capability. Now this, this particular one is a thousand watts continuous and it can do a surge, quick surge of 2000, 2000 watts. What that means basically is that if you're exceeding a thousand watts for a, a little bit, it's going to be okay, but you can't ride above that thousand watts for very much more than a, a, a quick instant. So for some devices that have a little motor and they need to start like air conditioners, you when they start, the compressor has to ramp up. Something like this could handle a very small AC unit, very small unit. Whereas if you get into bigger things and it has to ramp up, this isn't going to be able to do it. An example of that would be an RV, a, a camper in an RV. When you start the air conditioner on your, your RV, it has to ramp and power up that, that compressor. And if you don't have enough wattage available to be able to handle that, it's not going to be able to start and it's going to burn, burn itself out. So these have that ability to handle some quick spikes above their continuous rating, which is kind of a neat thing. But the, this particular unit has that thousand watt continuous and it has a capacity of a thousand watts. So that means that if you are at that thousand watt, you're going to be only getting about one hour of runtime, which can be a deal breaker for some people. But let's back up. Most things that I'm running, lights, uh, we're gonna do most of our, our examples with, with sound systems. Sound systems, in our case, don't pull as much as you would think. Speakers have ratings on them of 2000 watt speakers. That's the sound, it's working on the sound side of it. It's not the power coming out of the wall. Most of the speakers we're going to be looking at in our next videos are only dealing with, with speakers that max out at 50 watts and they'll peak at maybe 75 to 100 watt draw. But they kind of ride at that, that 50, 40, 50 watts to create the sound that, that people are needing for those. So you take two of those. So now we're going to have two speakers and they're going to bounce between 70 and probably 120 watts. So if we average it out to a 100 watt load, that is going to be able to run off the 1,000 watts available here for 10 hours. If you go down to a smaller unit, this again is a 1,000, uh, they have the Explore, the 290, and they have the Explore 550. The 550 has 550 watts available. Well, let's do our math again. If we're running, uh, if we're, our speakers are drawing 100 watts to run these two speakers pretty much wide open, if they're averaging that, that's going to give us about a five-hour runtime. A lot of speakers are way less than that, so it's even longer. It, I could literally put this out here, outside, and put one speaker on this and have it at a, a high level. It should it annoy the neighbor's level. And I literally could run this for, because that would pull about 25 to 30 watts. Do, doing the math, 30 watts. And I have, let's see, I've got a thousand watts, so it's going to run over a day with one speaker at a pretty good, and annoy the neighbor's level without a problem. And even the small one uh, at 290 watts available, the Jackery 290, that would be able to run a a hundred watt load, which would be a lot of speakers doing their things, a lot of volume, I should say. It's going to be able to run for two and a half hours pretty safely. So there's a lot of capability, but you have to be kind of aware of that. You can't go and use something like this to run uh, uh, two hair dryers type of a thing because that's going to be pulling too much watts. Most hair dryers are running somewhere between 750 and 1,000 watts. 1,000 watt continuous is right at the, the edge for something like this, and that's not cool when you're playing it that tight, that tight when it comes to your wattage. So we're going to do some things with this and show you some more of this uh, in action to kind of prove our points with this and how, thing, how the wattage varies from device to device. But I just want to give you kind of a basic on this is that your amp hours times your voltage, multiply those two together, that's going to tell you how much available wattage your batteries have, whether it's this battery, any battery, and then you take that number 
figuring that there's an inefficiency of about 15% that you knock right off. And that would be how many watts of, would be available for you to use on your devices. And then it becomes a question of if your inverter is designed to be able to give you 300 watts of power, or if it's like this little Ryobi one over here, that it's only designed to give you 150 watt peak and it's run, it's happy run spot for that little one is around 70 watts max. Anything above that can kind of make it do weird things. So we'll put links in the description so you can go check out a variety of different technology in this area. And we will be back with our next video where we're actually going to put some power to these things and kind of show you what I've been talking about. For more tips and how-to videos, go to weekendhandyman.com.